In this video, students will transform a quadratic function f of x equals to ax squared plus bx plus c to the form f of x equals to ax minus h squared plus k to identify the different attributes. So at the completion of this lesson, you should be able to transform a quadratic function in standard form to vertex form and vice versa and given a quadratic function analyze in detail its specific transformations from the current quadratic function f of x equals to x squared so this video is in two parts and this is part one so we want to write the equation in vertex form that's what i want you to do first see if you can take this video and rewrite it in uh, and write it in vertex form. Now you can pause the video if you take about you should be able to do it in about a minute. Okay? Alright, so pause the video for a minute, see if you can do it. Okay? I'll pause the video. And let's see what the actual answer turned out to be. If you write this equation in vertex form, you should see that there's two points you can identify. Certainly, you can identify the vertex. You can't write in vertex form if you don't know what the vertex is. And the y-intercept actually, 0, 2 is fairly obvious as well. So, that the vertex is the point, 1, 4. And we denote that with h and k. So we know that h is 1 and k is 4. Keep track of which of which number is h and which coordinates are it is k. And then the point is the point 0, 2, which is any x and y on a curve that we can identify. There's only one vertex, but you can use any x and y from the curve. Uh, in order to write the equation in vertex form. So, let's, uh, what is vertex form? Vertex form looks like this. Y equals to A times X minus H squared plus K. Let's fill in our points. Let's fill the vertex in with our points. We'll get this. Y is 2, X is 0, H is 1, and K is 4. Notice that there's a minus sign in front of the one. It doesn't make it a negative one per se, but uh, that's in filling in the form, you gotta make sure you don't change any of the signs. Okay? Now, let's simplify. Zero minus one is a negative one. And so you're gonna get a negative one squared inside the parentheses there. Bring everything else down. But what is a negative one squared? It's negative 1 times negative 1, which is just 1. And 1 times a is just a. So we bring down our a, and so we bring down our 4 and our 2. Uh, subtracting 4 from both sides reveals what a is. a is a negative 2. And since a is a negative 2, then we know what a is, we know what h is, we know what k is. We can write the, we can write the answer now. All right, so the, we see now that the vertex form is y equals to negative 2, if I can move this, negative 2 times x minus 1 squared plus 4. And that's in vertex form. Now, what we're going to do with this lesson is we're going to convert that vertex form to standard form. And how do we do that? We can convert the equation from vertex form to standard form by expanding this binomial x minus h squared, or in this case, x minus 1 squared. And this is what happens when you expand that. That means you're going to multiply x times 1 times x minus 1. And when you do that, you'll get the trinomial, three terms, x squared minus 2x plus 1. All right. The uh, details on how to actually perform that multiplication or to square that binomial is actually will be on the next slide. 
But here I want to just show the conversion from vertex form to standard. So let's keep going. Now let's go ahead and use our distributor property. Distributor negative 2. Distributor negative 2. 2 negative 2 times x squared is negative 2 x squared. Negative 2 times negative 2x is just 4x. And negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Bring down your 4. We can simplify this last line because we have two like terms, a negative 2 and a 4. If we combine those, we end up with, voila, this is standard form. How do you know standard form? We got x squared, we got x, and we got a constant. So that lets us know that, uh, remember that's what standard form looks like. And here, this is standard form where A is negative 2, B is 4, and C is 2. That's something we learned last week. Now, about that binomial, uh, X minus 1 squared. There is, here are three ways in which you can expand that. Uh, this is the way in which is taught in many algebra 1 classes, where you use the box method. Put the x minus 1 on the outside, x minus 1, since it's x minus 1 squared, I'll write x minus 1 is size of a square. And then we multiply x times x is x squared, one time, negative 1 times x is negative x, x times negative 1 is negative x, and negative 1 times negative 1 is just 1. And then you combine your like terms, you got the negative x and negative x, you put those together, you get negative 2x. And so, bringing everything else down, you end up with x squared minus 2x plus 1. That's the box method. There is also the formula chart, where x is, you're using the formula of a minus b squared is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, where a is the same as x, and b is the same as 1. So, if you make those substitutions, put a 1 wherever you see a b, and you put an x wherever you see an a, and you get the exp you expand that, simplify that, you'll get this. Same thing. And then there's a stack method, which is you think about how you multiply uh, two digit numbers like 25 times 25. Then you know you're gonna multiply negative one times negative one, positive one, then you go over here, x times negative one is a negative x, and so forth. So uh, stack method and actually box are very very similar. They just look different, but it's exactly the same one because you've been doing all your life. So that's just a brief reminder. Okay. Uh, now let's put this into practice. Here are two examples. Both of these, example 16 and 17, are in vertex form, and we want to put them in standard form. So remember to convert a quadratic. Uh, from vertex form to standard form, you're going to expand the binomial x minus h squared and then simplify. So pause the video and see if you can work, if you can correctly expand exercise 16 and 17. And when you're ready, unpause the video to see what the answers are. Right, so you pause the video and let's see what the answers turned out to be. Hopefully you got y equals x squared minus 4x plus 9 as your answer for exercise 16. And for exercise 17, you got y equals negative 4x squared minus 24x minus 15. All right. Let's look at the solution strategy um, computation in case you did not get those results. So first of all, it's always good to write the problem right the vertex form. Alright, we're going to expand the x minus the binomial x minus 2. And you're going to use the box method here. Or you could have used the stack or the other. Notice how we filled in the box and how we simplified the, the like terms. Now that you know what the expansion of x minus 2 squared is, so put that back into the equation. All right, combine your like terms of 4 plus 5, and you get 4 plus 5 is equal to 9. 4 plus 5 is equal to 9. So 
that is that's that's your result there all right so let's go to example number 17. Expand the box method substitute it back in combine your like terms and then you got negative 4x squared minus 24x minus 15 and that's in standard form what we've just done is convert it from vertex form to standard form by expanding x minus h squared and then simplifying in this video we will learn how to take a quadratic equation that's written in vertex form and convert it back to standard form or in standard form. So uh, this will be one example. Okay? So we'll start with, uh, we'll use exercise 14 and we'll use y equals to 2x squared minus 4x um, minus 3. I apologize for looking up, it's a habit big screen so here's what you need to realize to convert from standard form to vertex form uh, two steps find the vertex using the axis of symmetry and then use a h and k the values for a h and k and then write the vertex form so use the you know, the vertex is on the axis of symmetry so if you find the axis of symmetry, you have found the x coordinate of the vertex. Then we're going to plug that x coordinate uh, value into the function to figure out what y is, and then we're able to identify what the vertex is. We basically locate what h k is. So, so here we go. We already know since y equals 2x squared minus 4x minus 3 is already in standard form, we already know what a is. So a is 2, okay, and b is negative 4, c is negative 3, but we don't need c. All right, so here are the steps to finding the vertex. The axis of symmetry is found with x equals to a negative b over 2a. So we're going to substitute in that formula the values for b and a. So that's going to be x is equal to a negative, negative 4 over 2 times 2. And 2 times 2 is 4. And then we got a negative 4 divided by 4, which is negative 1. And the opposite of negative 1 is 1. So that's the x, that's the x coordinate of the vertex. So we're going to take that x coordinate. Plug it into f, the function. Remember, y is the same as f of x. So we take f of 1. So we're going to put a 1 everywhere we see an x. So that's going to give us 2 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 minus 3. If we simplify that, that's just going to give us 2 minus 4 minus 3. If you subtract that or put that uh, in your calculator, you'll get a negative 5. So what does that mean? The vertex is 1, negative 5. So now we got everything we need to write the vertex form. We know what a is, is 2. We know that h is 1. We know this k is negative 5. So there is our vertex form. All right. So this is the way to find it algebraically. Know that we didn't use a graph at any time. Now you might find it easier and faster to use a graph. Because if you graph this function, look what happens if we solve it graphically. Graph the function and locate the vertex. Uh, many times you can graph the function and you can either use the software or you can find the vertex just by looking at the graph. Once you know what the vertex is, you have H and K and you know what A is because they gave you the standard form. So in this example, when we graph in Desmos, you know, we're going to get that the vertex is 1, negative 5. You may not be able to see it on the uh, video screen. Let me see if I can move it where well, you can. All right. That should be a little better. Maybe my slide thing is not showing there. And so that tells, now you can see it. So that lets us know that our vertex is, again, 1, negative 5. We know what A is. We know what H and K is. So we can just write standard form again.
all right? And so here's a, so those are two ways. There are other ways that we could also learn to do it, but these are two uh, relatively simple ways in which you can find the vertex if you're given the standard form and you want to convert it to vertex form.